Hello, this is Abby from OllieHolly.com. In this video, I will be showing you the basics of amigurumi. If you are new to crochet, you should check out my crochet basics video and magic circle tutorial before proceeding with this video. They will be linked in the description box down below. The easiest way to show you the basics of amigurumi is to make a ball. So that's what we'll be doing in this video. I will be using a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook and I'm using Paintbox Yarns Cotton Aran in Mandarin Orange which is a discontinued color so I'm just trying to use it up. I like using cotton yarn as opposed to acrylic yarn when I make amigurumi because I like that the cotton doesn't stretch and helps with yarn tension a little better. I also like to see my stitches a little more clearly and acrylic is a little too fuzzy to achieve that. Other things I will be using are a stitch marker. It's not completely necessary to use a stitch marker, but I like to just so that I can multitask when I crochet. You can also use a scrap piece of yarn as a stitch marker if you don't have a stitch marker handy. I will also be using polyfill stuffing. I sometimes like to sandwich some scrap yarn in the center of the polyfill to try to use up the scrap I have left over from previous projects. And of course, I'll be using a pair of scissors and a darning needle for when closing the hole at the bottom when we're done. Knowing how to read a pattern is helpful and will allow you to make amigurumi easily. This is the pattern we are working with in this video. All amigurumi patterns will come with a terminology or abbreviations chart that you can use to help translate the pattern. Let's take a look at this pattern's terminology. SC stands for single crochet. INC stands for increase. DEC stands for invisible decrease. And when you see a number in front of SC, it means that you need to make one single crochet into the next number of stitches. So, if the pattern says 3SC, we will be working one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. Repeat anything in the parentheses however many times the number indicates. And the number in the brackets at the end indicates how many stitches you should have by the time you are done with your row. For most amigurumi patterns, you will work mostly in single crochet. This is because single crochet stitches are tighter together and your stuffing is less likely to show through between the stitches when compared to half double crochet stitches or double crochet stitches. To start, we will need to make a magic circle. If you're not familiar with the magic circle, please watch my magic circle tutorial video where I break it down step by step a little bit slower. With your left palm facing you, Lay the tail end of your yarn over your fingers. Wrap the working end around your index and middle fingers to form an X. Turn your hand over and insert your hook underneath the right strand and over the left. Pull the left strand under the right and turn your hook up towards you to create a loop on your hook. Insert your hook under the working end of the yarn and pull it through the loop that is on your hook. Remove your fingers from the circle and pull on the working end to secure it. So let's take a look at our pattern. For the first row, we will be making six single crochets into the magic circle. Insert your hook into the loop, making sure your hook is going under both the tail end of the yarn and the circle. I also like to hold the circle with my left thumb and index finger to help stabilize it a little. Yarn over and draw a loop up. Yarn over one more time and draw it through both of the loops on your hook. Do this five more times until you have a total of six single crochets in the circle.
Once you are done making six single crochets into your magic circle, pull on the tail end to close the circle fully. For amigurumi, we won't be slip stitching to the first stitch at the end of each row because doing so creates a visible join. Instead, we'll just work the first stitch of the next row into the first stitch of the previous row. In row 2, we will be increasing into each of the stitches from the first row. Increasing is quite simple. All you have to do is make two single crochets into each stitch. This is our first stitch, so let's make two single crochets into it. The first stitch is always going to be a little tighter, so inserting your hook in can be a little bit difficult. Just do your best to wiggle your hook in. Yarn over and draw a loop up. Yarn over one more time and draw it through both of the loops on your hook. Insert your hook into the same stitch. Yarn over and draw a loop up. Yarn over one more time and draw it through both of the loops on your hook. I like to place a stitch marker onto the first stitch of each row so that I can keep track of where I'm at. Increase in the rest of the stitches until you have a total of 12 stitches and I'll meet you at the end of row 2. If the circle in the center is looking a little too wide, you can pull on the tail to tighten the circle a little bit more. For the next two rows, we will be increasing the size of our circle slowly by increasing each row by six stitches. In row three, we are making one single crochet into the first stitch and increasing in the next. Continue alternating between making one single crochet and increasing in the next until you get to the end of the row. So, one single crochet into the first stitch. Replace your stitch marker if you're using one. And increasing into the next stitch. I will meet you at the end of row 3. In row 4, we are going to be making one single crochet into the first stitch, then increasing in the next. Then we'll be making one single crochet per stitch for the next two stitches, and then increasing in the next. We'll be repeating the two single crochet and increasing for a total of five times. And to end off the row, we'll be making one single crochet in the final stitch. I'll also show you how to use your scrap yarn as a stitch marker. For our first stitch, we'll be making a single crochet. Lay your scrap yarn over the working end and over on top of the stitch. Then insert your hook into the stitch, making sure to go around your scrap yarn. Yarn over and draw a loop up. Yarn over one more time and draw it through both of the loops on your hook. Your scrap yarn should be in your first stitch, acting as a stitch marker now. Increase into the next stitch. Then from now on, we'll be making one single crochet per stitch into the next two stitches and then increasing. Repeat making two single crochets and increasing for a total of five times before finishing off the row with one single crochet. I will meet you at the end of this row.
In row 5, we'll be working 3 single crochets and then increasing in the 4th stitch. So, 1 single crochet, 2, Three, then increasing into the fourth stitch. Repeat this five more times until you get to the end of the row. I will meet you at the end of row five. When you take a look at what you have so far, you'll notice that the increased stitches are staggered. Let's take a closer look. Some patterns will line all of the increased stitches up, and I find that it sort of creates a hexagonal shape. It's not a huge difference, but I do think that staggering the increased stitches makes the shape just a little bit smoother. For rows 6 and 7, we will begin to build the sides up a little. To do so, all we have to do is make one single crochet into each of the stitches without making any increased stitches. So, one single crochet into each stitch for the next two rows. I will meet you at the end of row 7. So now that we're at the end of row 7, you'll notice that by not making any increased stitches, we're pulling the sides up just a little bit. To round the ball out a little more gradually, we're going to be doing another increased row. We'll be increasing the next row by 6 stitches. So to do so, we'll be making 2 single crochet, increase, and then repeat the following 5 times. 4 single crochet and increasing. We'll be ending the row off with 2 single crochet. So single crochet into the first stitch and make another single crochet into the second stitch. Increase in that third stitch. Then we'll be working 4 single crochet and then increasing in the fifth. 1, 2, 3, 4, then increasing in that 5th stitch. Repeat making 4 single crochet and increasing 4 more times and you'll end the row out with 2 single crochet. I'll meet you at the end of row 8. In the next three rows, we will be building up the sides a little bit more. So that means one single crochet in each of the stitches. I'll meet you at the end of row 11. In row 12, we will be decreasing the row by 6 stitches. By decreasing, we will be cinching the sides of the ball in. Before I can show you how to do the invisible decrease, you will need to understand the difference between the front loops and the back loops of a stitch. When you look at a stitch from the top down, you'll see a letter V. The front loop of the stitch is this front leg of the V that is closer to you. And the back loop of the stitch is the leg that is further away from you. 
It's important to know how to distinguish between the front and the back loops because we will be working only with the front loops when making an invisible decrease. For row 12, we will be making two single crochets before decreasing. So let's make those two single crochet first. To make an invisible decrease, insert your hook into the front loop only of the first stitch you are trying to decrease. So let's see that again. I'm going under the front loop only and out the center. And then insert your hook into the front loop only of the second stitch that you are decreasing. Yarn over and draw a loop up through both of those front loops. Yarn over one more time and draw it through both of the loops that are on your hook. You have just combined two stitches into one stitch. This creates a stitch that is a little bit less visible unless you're actually actively looking for it. Another way to decrease your stitches that is more common when you're not making amigurumi is the SD2 TOG, which stands for a single crochet two together. I'll show you how to do the SD2 TOG right beside our invisible decrease just so that you can see the difference. To do so, insert your hook into the next stitch, the first stitch that you're trying to decrease, yarn over, and draw a loop up. Then, insert your hook into the second stitch that you're trying to decrease, yarn over, and draw a loop up. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over one more time and draw it through all three of those loops that are on your hook. When you look at the stitches side by side, you'll notice a very big difference between the invisible decrease and the SC2 tog, which is a little bit bulkier. You can also do the single crochet two together method with more stitches. So for example, to create corners, I like to do a single crochet three together decrease stitch. Just make sure to insert your hook into the next stitch and draw another loop up so that you are working the decrease stitch over the span of three stitches. Anyway, now that we know how to make decrease stitches, let's continue working on this row. So that's one, two, three, four single crochets. I'll show you the decrease stitch one more time before moving on. Insert your hook underneath the front loop of the first stitch that you are decreasing. Then, insert your hook underneath the front loops only of the second stitch that you're trying to decrease. Yarn over and draw a loop up. Yarn over one more time and draw it through both of the loops on your hook. Continue making four single crochet and then decreasing until you get to the final two stitches in which you will just be doing two single crochet. I'll meet you at the end of this row. In the next two rows, we will be single crocheting in all of the stitches to further build the sides up. Doing so will also make the decrease a little bit more gradual so that we're not cinching the sides in too drastically. I'll meet you at the end of row 14. In row 15, we will be doing three single crochets and then decreasing. So that's one single crochet, two single crochet, three, 
then we'll decrease in the next two stitches. Continue making three single crochet and decreasing until you get to the end of the row. I will meet you at the end of row 15. For row 16, we will be making a single crochet, decreasing, and then repeating the following five times. Two single crochet and decreasing. And then we'll finish off the row with a single crochet. So one single crochet, then we'll be decreasing the next two stitches. And then we'll be working two single crochet. Then decreasing the next two stitches. Continue following the pattern until you get to the end of row 16. I will meet you there. For smaller projects, the second to the last row is typically when I'll start stuffing. I like to wait until I'm a little closer to the end to stuff my projects so that I can manage the stuffing a little bit better. I'm going to pull my loop up a little so that we do not accidentally unravel our ball. And I'll remove the stitch marker so that it's out of the way when we're stuffing. Anyway, let's start stuffing. I used polyfill to stuff my amigurumi because it's the most readily available to me. To stuff your ball properly, make sure you're loosening up the polyfill before packing it into your ball layer by layer. I will also sometimes use scrap yarn that I collect from previous projects to stuff my toys sometimes. When I do that, I like to wrap the yarn in polyfill, like so. I like to make sure that my yarn is completely covered by polyfill. So remember to fluff up your polyfill before stuffing it in and make sure to do it small layers at a time. And if you're using scrap yarn to stuff your toys, make sure to pat off the bottom first before putting your yarn ball into it. Doing so will just ensure that your yarn doesn't come out when you're sewing things together or embroidering. I'll take the stuffing out before I close off the hole to show you how much stuffing I'm using for a ball this size. I find that the biggest beginner mistakes are often made with stuffing. Most beginners either overstuff or they understuff. So my basic rule of thumb for this is that I'll stuff it until it's firm but not so much so that it's stretching my stitches out and that I can see the stuffing inside. We will stuff a little bit more before we close the hole off later as well. Insert your hook back into the loop and we'll continue working that final row. In the final row, we will be doing a single crochet and then decreasing and then repeating that until we get to the end of this row. I'll meet you at the end of row 17 and I'll pull out all of my stuffing to show you how much I'm using for this ball. So I took off my stitch marker and my hook and let me just remove the stuffing so that I can show you how much stuffing is actually in this ball. So this is how much stuffing I have in my ball and in all honesty I could probably put a little bit more. So I'm going to restuff my ball now and um, just making sure to fluff up the polyfill 
and going layer by layer. After stuffing, cut the working end with your scissors and pull the loop up to fasten off. To close the hole off, thread the yarn tail onto your darning needle. If your ball needs more stuffing, make sure you do it before you close the hole off. Insert your needle through the front loop only of the next stitch and pull up. Continue doing this around all 12 of your stitches. I have a video tutorial on how you can do this, so if you need to see it a little bit slower, I'll link that in the description box down below. So final stitch. And now just pull on your tail until that hole completely closes up. Weave the tail in underneath the center stitches. Then weave the tail through the center of the hole and out the side. Remove your darning needle and take your scissors and cut the yarn tail off. You can squish the ball around to hide the tail. I also like to squish my amigurumi around to ensure that the shape is what I want it to be. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found this video helpful and that you have a better understanding of how to make amigurumi now. Please visit AliHali.com for free amigurumi patterns and I'll see you in the next video.